The Bitcoin network is more secure than ever. More miners continue to join the network. Elon Musk, uh, famously known for his financial uh, <laughs> <laughs> responsibilities. The headline says it all, Max. Hello, my name is Max. I'm the creative director at Cointelegraph. And uh, I'm Gareth, the managing editor from Cointelegraph. And we're going to be jumping into this week's editor's choice. So we have news from Trump uh, vowing to make the U.S. the world capital of crypto. Uh, Gareth, tell us about this and where did Trump say this? Yeah, so this uh, story came out at an event that Trump was at this week, and he's basically continuing on with his rhetoric in support of the crypto industry if he becomes the U.S. president again. He's promised to overhaul some regulations aimed at the cryptocurrency industry, and he says that he wants to make America the world capital for crypto and Bitcoin. Obviously, he's been going on about this for quite a while now. I don't think a lot of Bitcoiners will be happy with him throwing around the, world, the word crypto, especially after his uh, high-profile appearance at Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville a few weeks ago. He's also said, quite interestingly, that he wants to create a government efficiency commission, which was an idea that was floated by Elon Musk on X uh, about a month ago. And uh, Trump says that he thinks it's a great idea uh, to conduct a financial and performance audit of the entire federal government. And he says that he wants Elon Musk to be the man to do this. Elon said on Twitter or X that uh, he thinks that he'll have enough time to do this. He doesn't want to be paid. He doesn't want any recognition, but he thinks that it would be in the interest uh, of uh, the United States for this sort of thing to happen. So we'll have to see what comes of this. I just think it's pretty interesting that, that Trump is continuing to go hard on the crypto narrative, which makes sense considering how many crypto users there are in the United States. And he's also continuing to bang on the Elon Musk bandwagon. So another uh, interesting story out of the United States. Definitely. Elon Musk, uh, famously known for his financial uh, <laughs> responsibilities. Yeah, I also think it's interesting. Um, you know, we've seen so much uh, donations coming from the crypto industry into political elections uh, uh, this year. I think it's the number one industry that uh, uh, CNBC reported a, a week or two ago. Uh, so it is interesting to see just how how strong the rhetoric is getting uh, and Trump really coming uh, to back crypto here. Binance's CEO says that CZ will not have any managing or operational connection with Binance when he is released from prison. Gareth, tell us what's going on here. Yeah, so this was a report that came out from another media outlet this week uh, saying that Binance CEO Richard Ting has confirmed that CZ won't be involved in the operations or management of the exchange when he gets out of prison. Of course, uh, CZ is set to be released on the 29th of September. I spoke to Richard Ting late last year when he took over as Binance CEO when CZ stepped down. Uh, after their high-profile uh, court case in the U.S. and that $4.3 billion settlement. CZ pled guilty to one felony charge related to violations of the Bank Secrecy Act. And he's been in, in prison for a few months now, and he's set to be out at the end of the month. In December last year, Richard Teng told me that um, CZ wouldn't be able to have any uh, operational management duties with Binance after this whole debacle. And again, he's reiterated that. Uh, just to jog your memory, we did speak to him on a podcast with Cointelegraph, and this is what Richard Teng had to say. So CZ, as part of that settlement, uh, stepped down. He cannot be involved in the day-to-day -day running uh, of the company operations. We're going to stick with Binance and some disturbing news coming out about the head of crime compliance, Tigran Gambirian, in Nigeria. Gareth, what's going on here? This week, we saw Tigran Gamberian finally appear in court in Nigeria over those charges related to money laundering. Uh, he was arrested in February this year in relation to Binance's operations in the country. He's been detained since then, and the family and Binance have continually reported that uh, Tigran has had no access to his legal team and that he's had no access to adequate medical facilities while he's been detained in Nigerian prison. He appeared in court this week. He looked noticeably disheveled and he seems to be struggling with some health issues. They've uh, given us information that suggests that he's uh, got a bad back injury and some other issues that he is not being assisted with. And uh, this video that was circulating online uh, after his appearance in court uh, really is disturbing. Uh, we'll, we'll show it here very briefly just so that our audience can understand um, the 
dire situation under which Tigran is being uh, held. And to be clear, he is a U.S. citizen, is that right? Yeah, uh, Tigran's story is quite interesting. He was an IRS special agent in the United States for more than 10 years uh, before he joined Binance's compliance team. He was one of the executives there in charge of that department. Uh, Binance has really gone hard with their compliance department in recent years, and they have hired some of the best minds in the world, people that I've met and interviewed. I find it really disturbing that the United States has not got involved in any way, shape or form, just considering that Tigran worked for the government for a decade. And also just considering uh, the allegations of the mistreatment that he's been getting in Nigeria and uh, the lack of any word from uh, U.S. officials on his detention has been really surprising. And I think Cointelegraph can say on behalf of the entire cryptocurrency community that the situation involving Gambarian has been really tough to see. Uh, I think everyone denounces what's happening. And we would like to see some more sort of international cooperation in terms of addressing that lawsuit and his direct treatment as a result. We will be catching up with Binance later this month at Token 2049. And these will be some questions that I'll be putting to Richard Ting as well when we sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Polygon's Manic has upgraded to Pol. Uh, tell us, what is this new token? Everyone knows Polygon, the Ethereum Layer 2 protocol. It was originally launched as Matic and its native token back then was called Matic. Once it had rebranded to Polygon and continued with development of the, the Layer 2 protocol, they continued to have the token as Matic. Um, as part of its ongoing transition to Polygon 2.0, which is a much bigger sort of ecosystem-wide drive and upgrade of their, their protocol in general, um, they have carried out this conversion of Matic to Pol. So the execution of this technical upgrade took place this week. Matic has been automatically converted to Pol at a one-to-one -one ratio, and that is the network's native gas and staking token. They are touting this upgrade to enable the community to have a better participation in the network's growth. And there's no deadline for users to convert their Matic tokens to Pol. Um, if you're staking Matic, that's going to happen automatically. And while Matic was only earning fees uh, from gas and staking, this new poll token is uh, said to be uh, able to earn fees from additional actions within their network. Uh, Polygon Labs CEO Mark Boyron uh, explained a bit more in conversation with our reporter Zoltan Vardai, and you can check that out yet. So the first one ends up being that, you know, the, the community has been wanting to be able to participate in, in really growing like the network in the most meaningful way possible. And one of the things that they wanted is funds to be able to do that, right? And so now that there's 2% uh, emissions being introduced through this upgrade, it's going to give an opportunity for the community to participate. We're already seeing that. We just finished season one of the community grants program. Um, and that's because poll is live technically, even though the full migration hasn't happened. And so that's kind of created some admissions already that the community has been able to use. So that's the first one is really being able to like participate in the growth, um, which is great for the community. The Bitcoin network is more secure than ever with its hash rate reaching a new all time high. Gareth, what's going on here? The headline says it all, Max. Um, the Bitcoin network hash rate has hit another new all-time high. I think this is pretty significant news just considering that we had the latest halving earlier this year. It essentially means that more miners continue to join the network. And as a result, the hash rate, which is the uh, total sum computing power securing the Bitcoin network, has reached a new high. The more hash rate that comes onto the network, the more difficult it is for miners to secure the network. Um, and uh, it really is an indication of the strength of the network. The higher the hash rate, the more competition there is among miners and the more um, computing power is part of the network. For me, I put the story in just considering where we're at in terms of Bitcoin's price uh, in relation to the halving, which took place earlier this year and the appetite for companies and miners to continue joining the network and battling it out uh, to get a, or to be a part in the network and obviously mine and secure some Bitcoin. With the halving, the amount of Bitcoin that you receive for mining a block has reduced. 
So now there's even more competition for less amount of Bitcoin. I know a lot of Bitcoiners out there would say that this is a really healthy thing to see in the network. Um, it'll just be interesting to see if the hash rate remains to grow as we head into 2025 and uh, if uh, there's going to be more appetite from miners to be uh, putting new equipment online and securing the network, even though they know that the competition out there is just getting more and more. So a really interesting story to see and uh, something that is indicative of the uh, strength of the Bitcoin network. And that wraps up the news for this week. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our page to stay up to date with the latest crypto and blockchain news. Thank you.